Hey everybody, how we doing today? So welcome to Chumming 101 number 4. How to make chum sandballs. Now if you've been following along with my playlist Chumming 101 where I lay out the groundwork uh, to show how effective and important it is to chum here in the Florida Keys, you'll see that episode 2 was the the pro tips or the secrets of chumming for yellowtails. Now basically what that entails is that most people just know the get your chum net, block a chum, throw that out there, let that chum go in the current there, and basically wait for those yellowtails to show up. Now to really maximize your yellowtailing, there's a couple of other options that are very effective and very important that not a lot of people know about besides those locals and professional commercial fishermen. And one of those is, whoops, chum balls. Now what chum balls are or what they do is they allow you to drop chum down in the water column faster. Okay, with the normal chum and the chum net, they tend to just sit in the upper water column in the current and drift down. And your target species, the snappers and such, tend to uh, coagulate around the bottom along the seabed there. So it could take a long time for that chum to be up where you're at to slowly, gradually descent down to where the fish are. And then it's a long time for them to feed their way back up to within your target area. So what that chum does is that it gets that chum balls down and gets those fish feeding right below you and more closer to your target area. But one thing that people don't realize that they also do is they form a basic cookie trail. Okay, And the way that works is you drop that chum ball down as it's descending, little bits and pieces are falling off that chum ball. As it gets down, it hits the bottom, it breaks up, those fish just jump on it are eating all that chum there and just have a feeding frenzy. But then what happens, a couple of those fish look up and say, oh, there's a piece right there. And they come up and they eat that. And then they say, oh, there's another one. They come up, they eat that one. And they keep moving up that cookie trail to the point where they end up running into your standard chum line there. And then they start feeding and that activity breeds acti activity. And then those lower fish start going, hey, what's going on up there? And then they come up there and then all of a sudden you have that yellow brick road. So you can see in our overall chumming strategy how important chum balls are. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make chum sand balls. The first step is getting our frozen block of chum and a bucket. Now we need to defrost this because this is a frozen block. So we throw it in the bucket. I usually do it the night before, give it a good eight hours plus. Uh, I brought this up, the meat blanket effect, uh, when I did my chum flow test. Basically what happens with these frozen blocks of chum, uh, the outside will start defrosting first, and then what it does, it creates what I call a meat blanket. And that meat blanket insulates the internal parts and helps keep it stay frozen for a long, long time, surprisingly. All right, so what you can do is, if you want to shorten the amount of time, you just need to have somebody that's willing to go through and break up those chunks as soon as it starts thawing, get more surface area to the warm air, and then it'll slowly defrost. Uh, things that you don't want to do is to put it outside in the heat unless you're going that day, in which case you can probably do it in two, three, four hours with that breaking it up. But overnight, put it in your bucket, leave it inside your house. No, it doesn't smell. It doesn't smell at all because this is fresh bait, freshly frozen, and you're defrosting it. And in eight hours, it's still going to have a lot of coolness to it. Now, one of the things to remember is this block of chum is probably 75, 80% liquid, okay? Whether it be water, blood, fluids, etc. So there's a lot of liquid here. So when we're doing our sand mixture, if this block is not thoroughly, the chum is not thoroughly defrosted, you're gonna get your sand mix, you can get that consistency just right, and then 20 minutes later, it's gonna be a milky mess because more of it thawed out, all right? So you, what you wanna do is get it to, cool temperatures, thoroughly defrosted, mix it with the sand, and at that point you know that your consistency will stay right. And at that point what you can do is to, in order to not let it spoil, is get a frozen water bottle, throw it in the bucket with the, the chum mix, or keep it in your cooler and keep it cool so it's fresh while you're using it. But otherwise, let's get started. All right, let's hit up the old bait freezer. Grab a block of chum. 
And we're just gonna drop it in the old bucket here. Don't need the cardboard. All right, there we go. And that's all we gotta do. Okay, it's been about eight hours and our chum block is thawing. Uh, it's still frozen in the center even after eight hours uh, I left it in my kitchen probably overnight it was mid 70 degrees but we could speed up the process here you can kind of see the blood and the liquids down the bottom uh, we could speed up the process by breaking up this meat blanket uh, that's why you can kind of see why I call it that so this aspect of it is the meat blanket and then right here is still basically frozen ice so it's going to take a while but if we break this outer layer up, uh, it'll defrost a lot faster. So that's a big chunk there that was insulating it. These edges are going. So I'm just gonna kind of break it up, get that surface area to that fresh frozen areas and get that thing chawing faster. Uh, in the meantime, let's go talk about sand. All right, so we're talking about chum sand balls. We've talked about the chum. Now we need to talk about the sand. It's all about the sand. All right, now normally you would think, what? Well, it's just take some sand, take some chum, mix it together, drop it, and you're done. Uh, I have my kind of 96% rule. Uh, you could do 96% of the things I do and you're still gonna fail because of that 4%. Uh, everything makes a difference and this is a good example about it. Uh, the key characteristics of the sand that you want is uh, a very fine as well as consistent. Uh, what we're looking to do is try to make our chum balls as dense as possible. Uh, that is going to help them stay together while they're dropping through the uh, water column, but to also make them heavier so they can get down to those deeper water depths. Remember, we're targeting that uh, 70 to 100 foot ledge, so we need that chum ball to stay together until it gets down there. Uh, so what I've done is I've got multiple types of sand to work with and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what's the best type to look for. Here's a sampling of some basic sand found throughout our islands here, uh, starting with reef sand. So here's an example of actual kind of like reef sand, the real natural stuff. Uh, it's more like oatmeal or cat litter. It's very coarse. So uh, I'll take a sample of that and uh, we'll be able to compare it versus our other chum sand. Uh, this is basically made by rock on rock action, uh, crushing each other down. Uh, a lot of time from the current pushing rocks into other rocks and it breaks down and becomes basically sand. The other way it becomes this way is uh, reef fish basically chewing on the reef uh, like parrot fish. They'll eat the reef. Uh, swallow it, poop it out, and then you have these rougher textures there. Uh, this will be an option if you want to be totally environmentally friendly. Go out to the reef, clean it up uh, by pulling the sand off of it, make chum balls, and you're recycling it. Not the very good sand because you can see how the rough texture it is. Uh, that's not going to bond very well. It's very inconsistent, so not your best choice, but an option. Next up, we've got just some basic home dirt and just some regular dirt from the old flower bed there. Now that's just dirt. I just went out to my front yard, grabbed a handful. Again, that you'll see that uh, this is made up of a lot of different material. Uh, there's some sand, dirt, uh, there's wood, there's little rocks in it. Uh, so it's just kind of a mismatch of just stuff out there. So you're very inconsistent with all those particles. Uh, it's not going to bond very well and it's not going to be very heavy. So not a great option. Uh, another option that you could find similar to this is, is if you find the uh, sandbags used for uh, floods. Uh, you'll find those around quite a bit, especially right after a flood threat. People will buy the sandbags, then they won't use them. They don't want to storm around house, so they'll end up dumping them on the side the road and then you just have a nice combined bag that you could just take home and make your sand balls out of it. Uh, it'll be just kind of a rough mixture but it will work. Next up we've got beach sand. Uh, 
uh, for those that don't know, our local tourist public beaches, as well as most of the resort beaches, are made with this man-made, shipped-in, trucked-in sand. Uh, it's not local sand. Uh, it's just the only way to really get sand. If you go to our rough beaches, uh, where they're just kind of out on the sandbars or out on a, just a, a mangrove island. Most of the time, the sand will be something like this, where it's just pushed against the island and uh, just some rough uh, reef sand there. This is probably the most commonly used since you can just go down to any public beach, bring a bucket, scoop it up, and then you've got sand for making a sand ball. Uh, it's pretty good filtered sand. It's fairly small, so it'll pack well. Uh, it's all homogenized, so it's a very good option. This is probably the main uh, source that I use. Next up, we've got the uh, purchasable play sand or mortar sand. Here's the sand I use. This is basically some all natural play sand. I get a 50 pound bag for around four to five dollars. I just pick mine up at Home Depot. 100% uh, natural, pre-washed and screened. Uh, it's a very, very fine grain. Uh, better yet would be to get the uh, sand for mortar because it's even finer. Uh, finer the better, but this is a good economical option and you can find it all over the place but uh, that's what I use. This will be the finest grain. It'll be filtered, so it's all the same. And this is gonna be your best option if you want the best. Uh, it's gonna pack down and become very dense. Uh, and uh, it'll allow you to uh, drop it down. It'll stay together for those long depths to the 70 to 100 foot range. Uh, also, it'll pack to very dense and make it a lot heavier, so it'll sink farther and faster. So that is your best option in sand. If you're finding the Chumming 101 series helpful and want to support the channel, check out my tackle shop at www.allaboutthebait.com where I have all of your chumming accessories. Uh, starting with the quarter inch chum bag, we've got the half inch mesh, we've got the three quarters inch mesh bag. Remember, chum is ground at five eighths of an inch, so you need to have at least a three quarters inch mesh in order for it to flow correctly. From there we go to the one inch mesh in a small bag, one inch mesh in a large bag, and the one and a quarter inch mesh which also can be used to re-net your lobster bully net. Now these larger size meshes are direct replacements for your chum rings. So if you have a chum ring where it's ripped, torn, you could just buy the mesh size that you need and just re-net it. Otherwise, I sell the chum rings in a three quarters inch mesh, one inch mesh, and the inch and a quarter mesh. I also sell galvanized and galvanized coated chum cages, as well as if you chum, they will come apparel. I've got face masks, shirts, and even stickers. So check them out at www.allaboutthebait.com. All right, it's been about 10 hours and we're finally pretty much defrosted all the way through. No hard frozen parts. And we've got our base to work with. So now we just need to start adding some sand. Now I'm just gonna go a cup of sand at a time just so I can get a rough estimate. So you guys that are first time doing this will have an idea of how much sand to use. And I'm gonna start off with five cups get us kind of going here and then uh, I'll start mixing and then the key part is getting the consistency right and uh, I'm gonna go a little bit more than that I'm gonna go up to six I'm gonna go up to ten to start so we're closer to the ballpark All right, there's 10 scoops, so get on in there. Well, 10 cups was right on the mark, um, but the key way to tell is to test it. And I test it by doing kind of a, uh, a bouncing test. You just get some in your hand and then you just bounce it in your hand. And you know your consistency right is right 
when it forms a nice solid ball just by bouncing it. I'm not squeezing it, I'm just bouncing it. And it's not sticking to my fingers. It's not running through my fingers because it's too liquid. It's holding that shape. So I mean, it's holding that solid round shape there. It's almost a solid piece there. And that's about right. I hit it right on the nose. So that was about 10 cups, but you can vary it uh, if it's too liquidy. Add some more uh, uh, sand in it. If it's too dry, you could add a little bit of water to it. But like I said, as this defrosts, if there's any ice particles, it's going to become liquid and start liquefying. But that is right on. Look how clean my hands are, so it's not sticking. And boom, that is our perfect little chum ball there. All right, here is a pro tip for you. So when you've got your chum balls, you've dropped a few of them, now you want to start targeting some fish. Get one of your chum balls. Flatten it down there, create a little well in the center. Get one of your uh, yellow t all about the bait yellowtail snapper jigs with whatever your bait of choice is. Lay that in the center there and then just wrap it over with the chum. And what you're wanting to basically do is surround your bait with the chum, creating the ball around your bait. There it goes. Nice and compact, ready to go. Then what you can do is you could take your line, wrap it around the chum ball a few times. What that does is that it'll prevent, if there's any tension on the line, it's not gonna pull on that bait, which is gonna break open that chum ball right away. So it'll, it'll take the drag a little bit on the line and then the edges of the chum ball. Then it's easier with two people. You have one person handling the chum ball, one person on the rod because you want zero tension on this line. You have them ease this over into the water and let it go. The other person makes sure that that line is feeding. You could do it two ways. One, you could let it sink all the way to the bottom or until the fish start gobbling on it. Once it gets to that point, this chum ball gets broken open and your bait and hook are right in the middle of it. And hopefully there's a feeding frenzy and you hook up. The second option you can do is the same thing, drop it over the side, but let's say you want to target the mid-water column. You let that ball go down, just kind of guesstimate to when it's at the point when you want it to stop. You close your bail, just give it a tug, and then that chum ball is going to break apart because that bait is going to catch it. And then you're going to have a chum cloud with your bait right in the center of it, and those fish are going to go after it. So that's more of a targeted way of using these chum balls. But there you go. A bonus pro tip. Here's another tip for you. Uh, if you pre-make your chum mix and either you're not able to use it or you just want to have it done ahead of time, if you make your mix and use one of these uh, ice vending machine bags that, are, that people leave at the vending machines because they don't need them, they work perfectly to store these. Uh, this is a five pound block or six pound block of chum with a corresponding chum mix. And uh, you could easily store three sections in one of these bags, uh, throw it in the freezer, and uh, you're ready to go. So great little tip there. Alrighty, so that is Chumming 101 number four, Chum Sandballs. Now one last thing before we wrap it up. Uh, the recipe I gave is just the bare bones basic. All right, Chum Sand, all right? <laughs> But just like any other food recipe, you can spice it up however you want to. Uh, I oftentimes will add uh, oats to it. Um, they absorb some of that oils and scents, and plus they're edible versus the sand, which is not. And when they disperse, it creates a big cloud of uh, edible particles. So that really helps out on the bite. Uh, also, you can add uh, more menhaden oil to really set things up and get that scent uh, trail down on the lower water column. Uh, something I like to do as well is to add a couple of handfuls of glass minnows into my mix. And then when that breaks up, you get this big sparkly uh, glass minnows and then they're edible and the, the snappers really love them. So I really like doing that. Uh, in the past, the way I actually learned is we didn't use frozen block chum. Uh, we used whole sardines. 
So we get a 10 pound block of frozen sardines. Uh, same deal, throw them in a bucket, let them defrost. Then I would use a, kind of like a hoe, except that it's not bent 90 degrees. It's straight, so like a chopper. And then I would be chopping them up into the pieces that we want. So since we were um, dropping the chum balls, we wanted bigger chunks. So by manually chunk, uh, chunking them up, it allowed us to make the sizes that we want, bigger chunks, and then add the sand and so forth. So that's kind of how I learned how to do it. So don't just to worry about just doing the 10 cups of sand, block of chum, and that's it. Feel free to add whatever you want to your mix. But uh, anyways, hopefully you found the video helpful, interesting. Uh, otherwise, uh, check out my All About the Bait store for any of your chum accessory needs. Or, bye all about the bait yellowtail snapper hooks and weighted circle hooks. So check them out, www.allaboutthebait.com, and I'll see you next video where we're going to be talking about more chum balls.